Welcome to another edition of Ask Isaiah in-game analysis. Uh, today's game, January was January 19th on a Saturday. This is NBA uh, Saturday, ESPN's first presentation, OKC versus the Philadelphia 76ers. The Sixers are fourth in the East, while the Thunder are fourth in the West. We enter this particular analysis uh, while the game is in play. 748 remaining, OKC leads 15 to 11. Uh, Russell Westbrook has four points. Jerome Embiid has four points. Uh, ben Simmons uh, has three points. JJ Reddick just scored uh, as I speak. Steven Adams just got a uh, jump hook. So OKC leads 17 to 11. Now, both teams are in similar spaces, not just in terms of standing, but where they are in the respective lexicon in terms of where teams are uh, ranked in terms of contending. Both teams have potential, both teams have elite talent, but they're glaring flaws both ways. For OKC, they struggle shooting. For for the Sixers, as uh, Steven Adams just catches the alley-oop from Paul George, 19 to 11, 659 remaining, OKC, is, is on a run and Philadelphia has to call a timeout. But I think in terms of where this team is, the Sixers and OKC, many people believe that they have the talent, the requisite talent to compete, but the glaring flaws for both teams, I mentioned OKC shooting for Phil for the Sixers is closing particular games. They acquired Jimmy Butler 30 games ago and it's not been a seamless transition. A lot of it has had to do with Joel Embiid being a being the primary go-to guy, Jimmy Butler obviously coming in looking to be a compliment. The issue with Butler is that he's not necessarily getting the ball down a stretch of games as consistent as many would like. You still see the 76ers with a lot of dribble handoffs in the clutch, trying to get it to JJ Redick, who isn't the best ball handler. And then you have a player in Ben Simmons who has boundless potential because of his playmaking ability because of his size and because of his ability to attack, but he can't shoot as well. So if you have a perimeter player who can't shoot, a la Russell Westbrook, there's a lot of uh, defensive schemes that come into play that exploit that, and now you're at a disadvantage because both of those players, whether it be Ben Simmons or Russell Westbrook, uh, are so, so indoctrinated in what both teams do offensively. So... Uh, with that said, this particular matchup is, is relatively even. You have Ben Simmons and Embiid versus Russell Westbrook and Paul George. Then you have an interior matchup in strongman Stephen Adams, who's having a breakout season. He's in, he's in line to be a first-time All-Star this year. Uh, he's averaging uh, close to 16 points and 10 rebounds. Then you have, uh, you have Paul George versus Jimmy Butler, one-on-one. -on -one. Defensively, both players are two-way Dynamo. So this particular matchup itself is a great uh, foundation piece for where NBA on Saturday can be for ESPN. Uh, the matchups for the rest of the season are going to be spectacular. So s Saturdays now are back, especially with the uh, the NFL season about to come to an end. So this is a great this is a great segue into the future. So right now we have a timeout. So I'll be back with much more analysis as we break down the Philadelphia 76ers versus the Oklahoma City Thunder on this NBA Saturday. Welcome back. Um, out of the timeout, the Oklahoma City Thunder get a steal from Russell Westbrook. Uh, the communication between the Sixers was not there as uh, TJ McCollum tried to get a uh, pinch post pass uh, to Ben Simmons and Russell came from the weak side and stole that. The Sixers, the Sixers right now are about to begin a stretch in which they play 12 straight teams over 500. On Thursday, they, they soundly defeated the Indiana Pacers. Now, this particular matchup, you have the Thunder. So that stretch right here, this 12-game stretch, will prove where – well, it will be a great litmus test to see where this team will be going into the playoffs. For the Thunder, they're in a tough stretch right now. They've won one game in their last six matchups. So they're kind of hitting a rough patch. A lot of that has to do with shooting. 
They're coming up with tough loss to the to the LeBronless Lakers in Oklahoma City, in which I had to go to OT. The Thunder were up by 17 in the first half and ended up and ended up uh, blowing that lead due to just lack of days school offense at times. They did compete, but they couldn't defend the three. And with that said, you're going against a team in the Lakers who also can't shoot. So when you when you throw that into the mix, it's just uh, a tough a tough situation. But the Thunder seem to be getting healthy. They just uh, got Nerlens Noel back after a, a four game absence due to a concussion. So he should be able to impact some of their pick and, their pick and roll uh, roles down the stretch. And inside, Russell Westbrook gets an interior pass to Jeremy Grant, who, in my opinion, is in line to be a most improved player candidate. You know, he's he. This is his uh, third year in OKC. He's at. This is his first year in double figures. He's a he's a starter now. He's really coming into his own as a rotation player in Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook can't score over Landry Shamet, the rookie out of uh, Wichita State, and at least Ben Simmons to get a great pass to to T.J. McCollum, he got blocked by Nerlens Noel, who's also a former Sixer. And great interior defense there by Nerlens Noel. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of trust the process uh, threads between these two franchises. Nerlens Noel and Jeremy Grant were a part of the Sixer team that was trusting the process, as I should say, and waiting for Joel Embiid to get healthy. Joel Embiid would play with uh, Jeremy Grant for, well, was on the same team. He didn't actually play, but Jeremy was with the Sixers before he actually came to Oklahoma City in a trade. And Paul George just gets a, uh, he draws a blocking foul. Paul George having a career year this year with Oklahoma City. Um, but yeah, the, the threads between these two teams are deep, so it's good to see. Uh, Paul George on Thursday had 27.7 rebounds, eight assists, and three steals. Uh, in, that, in that matchup against the Lakers. This season, as I said, he's having a career year scoring-wise um, in terms of averaging just under 27 points per. He's averaging four assists. He's set, he's second in the league in steals per game, uh, but he's he's first in, in total. The the leader in steals is Russell Westbrook. So this, this Oklahoma City Thunder team is first in defensive efficiency, which – was was way was at a way higher clip over the last uh, five games. They it clearly diminished because of some of the three point shooting, not just from the Lakers, but also from the Hawks as well, in which the, the Thunder suffered a, a horrible loss to the to the Hawks. But they're first in defensive efficiency, and due to the fact that you have a a versatile team like this, I mentioned Paul George. Paul George's two-way play. You got Russell Westbrook, who, when he's engaged, is one of the best defensive guards. You have Jeremy Grant's versatility. You have Stephen Adams, who is a defensive uh, stalwart inside. So this team is a great defensive team. And as I say that, uh, Jeremy Grant just stopped Ben Simmons at the rim with a with a tremendous block. It actually went off of Ben Simmons, so they uh, Oklahoma City gets the gets the ball, Russell Westbrook just missed the mid-range. But right now, Oklahoma City leads 27 to 13, 414 remaining. Shemed thought about a three, he gets it to Simmons, who is now being guarded by Dennis Schroeder. Inside, what a Euro step, kicks out to Shemed. It worked the ball around and Jimmy Butler, step back jumper is good. So maybe the for for the Sixers, this is a bit of an early start for them. Got to adjust as Russell looked to set up Paul George in the right corner, unable to get it to him, but it was deflected out of bounds, so possession will stay with the Thunder. And also, I just look at the Sixer bench and you see Mon Monty Williams there. Monty Williams was an assistant with the Thunder in 2015 and 16. Um, prior to the untimely death of his wife, uh, my condolences to to uh, Monty Williams, but he was actually with the Thunder for some time prior to that untimely passing. And uh, a lot of the the relationships he fostered with Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, while he was with Thunder, Stephen Adams, and others, 
uh, that that bond is still strong. So that just adds to the threat I, I said uh, between these two teams. But there's a media timeout, so we'll be back with more. The Thunder lead the Philadelphia 76ers 27-15. to 15. I'm Isaiah Rhodes. This is Ask Isaiah in Game Analysis. We'll be back with more. Out of the timeout, uh, Oklahoma City had the ball, but Steven Adams turns over the basketball. Joel B came down, took a, a straightaway three, unable to knock it down. And into the – oh, wow. Russell Westbrook almost had a putback slam, couldn't get it. But the effort from Westbrook to tip it out to uh, Dennis Schroeder retains possession for the Thunder. Jeremy Grant, a bit out of control, tried to get into – tried to slice two defenders. Uh, but uh, they call – they call a foul, so he was bailed out there with eight on the shot clock. But that putback slam from Westbrook would have been a tremendous highlight. But as I mentioned, Jeremy Grant having a career year, averaging 28, excuse me, 12.8 points per game. A lot of that just has to do with playing, playing more. And he finally has a well-defined role, I think, coming out of Syracuse, going to the Thunder going to the to the Sixers when he was drafted it was it was a it was a dark period in terms of just not uh adequately uh setting up setting up a prospering franchise they were just gathering assets to have assets but not necessarily really building a team so I think for Oklahoma City when they got him in the 2016-2017 season they were uh, trying to build around Russell Westbrook in a way to have athletic players who run consistently and play defense. And I think it's coming to fruition at this time. As I say that, Oklahoma City gets another steal from the interior. They go up 16 points during the shoot. They just had a, had a breakaway steal. And semi-transition gets a basket over TJ McCollum. I think for right now, the Sixers, the, the Sixers have not matched Oklahoma City's energy at all. Offensively, they aren't fluid. They're missing open shots, and Oklahoma City is just able to get out and run and get anything they want on the interior. So, uh, Brent Brown calls another timeout. As I mentioned, Oklahoma City leads by 16. We'll be back with more 31 to 15. Thunder lead to 16. Out of the timeout, JJ Reddick able to get a mid range jumper to fall from the left wing, and they almost had a steal there. They do get the turnover, though, as Wilson Chandler uh, overplays Paul George in a way to where he wasn't ready uh, for that particular defensive pressure. And they, they call a foul against Paul George uh, trying to prevent Wilson Chandler from getting the basketball. So the Thunder up 14, 226 remaining in the first, 31 to 17. The Sixers, the Sixers, are in the penalty as uh, Wilson Chandler goes to the free throw line. He'll be he'll be trying to cut into this 12-point lead. Excuse me, 14-point lead. Chandler goes one of two at the line, so it's 31 to 18. Into the game for the Thunder is Abdul Nader. Schroeder takes contact from McCollum, can't finish. So the Sixers trying to build some momentum here. McConnell tries to kick it out to J.J. Reddick, but it's stolen by Paul George. Paul George faces a trap. He gets it to Schroeder. Shooter had it deflected by McConnell. And they say that it's out of bounds off of Shooter. But I, through that uh, particular possession office, Stephen Adams was under the opposite rim for so long that they were able to trap uh, Paul George before he actually found Shooter. So that, that threw off the possession. Uh, it appears that uh, Adams is okay, but something – Something as small as that can throw off an entire possession. JJ Reddick right wing three, and he knocks it down. So out of that 
last time out, the Sixers are on a six nothing run, trying to trying to build as much momentum as possible. Now it's a ten point game. 